Welcome to the Kern Lafco Commission's September meeting. After several complicated meetings, tonight's meeting should be something closer to one of our typical meetings. Uh, there are a couple of notes regarding how this meeting will be held both in person and by video conference. Let me provide what I think will be helpful tips for running this meeting smoothly. For our guests who are in the room, if you are a representative from an agency or here from the general public and wish to speak on an item before the commission, we ask that you use the microphone at the podium. Allow the chair to recognize you and speak into the microphone. We are recording these proceedings and want to make sure that you are heard clearly both in the room and online. For those attending by video conference, if you are an agency or the public, your microphone is muted until the chair recognizes you and the host unmutes your microphone. There will be an opportunity to speak on specific items on the agenda. Please use the raise hand function on Zoom to, re to be recognized. The raise hand function is in different places depending on your version and the device you're using to participate. Mr. Rice is host and in charge of the Zoom portion of the meeting. If anyone gets disruptive, Mr. Rice has the authority to remove them from Zoom. Or if anyone needs to recuse themselves, Mr. Rice can place them in the waiting room and bring them back out again when the agenda item is completed. All votes will be roll call votes. Commissioners on Zoom, please make sure you are unmuted when you vote and as we are recording and need to hear your responses. Thank you to everyone for working with us. Um, with that, I'll turn it back to the chair. Thank you. Madam Clerk, can we have the roll call, please? Commissioner Young. Commissioner Couch? Here. Commissioner Crump? Here. Commissioner Fowler? Here. Commissioner McKibben? Here. Commissioner Parnier? Here. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Sanders, would you mind leading us in the pledge? Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. For our teleconference meeting requirements, discussion and possible minute action, meeting protocol, a motion to hold the board meeting by teleconference pursuant to Assembly Bill 6, excuse me, 361, and Government Code Section 54953E, and finding that there is a proclaimed state of emergency and local officials have recommended measures to promote social distancing, all is required by AB 361 and section 54953E. Mr. Knox. It is my recommendation to approve the findings of a state of emergency and local official have recommended measures to promote social distancing as per the requirements of AB 361. Thank you. Is there public comment on this item? Is there a commission comment or questions? I'll entertain a vote. Is there a motion? Motion McKibben. Second Crump. Motion, Commissioner McKibben. Second, Commissioner Crump. May we have a vote, please? Commissioner Ayon. <coughs> yes. Commissioner Couch. Yes. Commissioner Crump. Yes. Yes. Commissioner McKibben. Yes. Commissioner Yes. Yes. Commissioner Arion. Commissioner Scribner. Declared motion passes. 
Thank you. Next item is approval of the minutes of the August 24th, 22 meeting. Is there public comment? Commission comment or questions? I'll call for a motion to approve the minutes as written. Motion McKibben. Motion McKibben. Second, Zaragoza. Second, Commissioner Zaragoza. May we have the vote, please? Yes. Commissioner Crump? Abstain. Commissioner Fowler? Yes. Commissioner McKibben? Yes. Commissioner Sanders? Abstain. Commissioner Scribner? Commissioner Sargoza? Yes. Okay. Thank you. No. Nope. Got to have a have majority a of corn. The, the two who abstain, you, you abstain because you weren't here. Correct. That doesn't matter. You can vote for it. Could we hear that roll call again from the top, please? And chair, yes. For we have Commissioner Ione and Commissioner Scrivener uh, on Zoom, but for some reason we're not hearing them. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I can I'm not see exactly their names sure up why. on the screen, so. We'll try to contact them. We're hearing clunking. Okay. All right. Shall we do that roll call vote again? Let's wait one second. All right. We'll pause. Can, if I could ask the attorney for clarification, when is it typically okay for a commissioner to say abstain on a vote? Is it like a typical scenario? Whenever they feel like it. There is no rule. Except on it. right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just letting them know that. I just assumed because I wasn't here. No. Election. No, you can but still vote in, in favor. We're here. We, need, we don't know who voted what. We know what's written down, but we don't know, hey, this needs to be corrected. Okay. I thought maybe there, if there was a potential issue, just to be on the safe side, they would abstain. Okay, so you don't have to have a reason. You can just abstain. Okay. Thank you. Clarification. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's not allowed. Does it mix things up? Is that what you're saying? Shall we do the roll call again? Commissioner Ion? Commissioner Couch? Yes. Commissioner Yes. Yes. Thank you. Our next item is public comments. This portion of the meeting is reserved for persons desiring to address the commission on any matter not on this agenda over which the commission has jurisdiction. Speakers are limited to two minutes. Please state your name and address for the record before making your presentation. Are there any members of the public who would like to speak? Anyone on? The phone or on Zoom? No? We'll go on to notice public hearings. Uh, item 1807, Sphere of Influence, Five-Year Question Error Review, uh, pursuant to Government Code 56425 G, on or before January 1st, 2008, and every five years thereafter, the Commission shall, as necessary, review and update each sphere of influence. Do you want me to read those or? I'll, I'll do it for you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. <laughs> Going back to 2008, a dec decision was made by the commission when the law became active to handle these sphere of influence re reviews with a questionnaire. This spring, a questionnaire was sent to all the cities and special districts for which Colonel Lafco has conducting authority, which means we're the principal county. Of the 93 questionnaires that were sent out to special districts, less than half have been returned. As of the August meeting, 13 districts were considered by the commission. Tonight we have 12 complete questionnaires, 
beach being reviewed with no indication that their sphere of influence needs to be modified in the next five years. I'm requesting the commission adopt a resolution reaffirming the following spheres of influence as in compliance with government code section 56425G. And these are Devil's Den Water District, East Kern Resource Conservation District, Ford City Taft Heights Sanitation Di Sanitary District, <coughs> Greenfield County Water District, Keene Water District, Kern County Water Agency, Lamont Public Utility District, McFarland Rec and Park District. North hey, this is Zach. Has anybody on the call heard from anybody in the meeting? Uh, I haven't heard anything. This is uh, Salt Leone. Yeah, I see. I see on the call. I mean, I see. I see. Uh, Commissioner, you're live. You're live on, you know, live on the recorded meeting right now. Picture on there, but uh, I. Yeah, I haven't heard anything, and I texted Blair, saying, "Are you guys having technical difficulties or something?" So I don't know. I guess we just stand by. Yeah, he just he just emailed me and said it, that they could hear some some noise, but they can't. They're they're asking us questions, so. Uh, okay, I'll see. I'll probably have email to you then. Thanks. Okay, no problem. It's nice to hear from them. They can't hear us, however. <laughs> At least we know they're there, not just names on the screen. Um, do you recommend we just proceed? Go ahead, Mr. Knox. We should, we should solve this first. All right, we'll pause. We'll have a five-minute pause. We will reconvene the meeting at this moment and return to Mr. Knox for his report on the sphere of influence reports. Let me do this again. <laughs> I turn it off because we were talking about sexual harassment. <laughs> Prevention. Uh, for uh, Commissioner Scrivener and uh, Commissioner Ions, um, for them to catch up, we've done the, we've done the minutes, we've done public comments. There were none. Uh, we are down to item number six. Uh, 1807, the sphere of influence, five-year questionnaire re and reviews. But welcome, gentlemen. Come on. Yeah. Okay. So I was down to the 12, di the 12 districts, Devil's Den, East Kern Resource Conservation District, Ford City Taft High Sanitary, Greenfield County Water, Keene Water Di District, Kern County Water Agency, Lamont Public Utilities District, McFarland Rec and Park District, North the River Recreation and Park District, North the River Sanitary District, West Kern Water District, West Side Recreation and Park District. And I am requesting the commission adopt a resolution reaffirming the following spheres uh, of, these, of these 12. Uh, Staff is planning on sending out another round of S, uh, sphere of influence questionnaires and will continue to review sphere of influences for the, rema for the remaining districts, cities, and county service areas and will bring these before the commission as they are completed. If a, low, if a low turnout for these questionnaires continues, we might need to look at alternative policies to encourage par participation. With that, it's my recommendation to confirm the sphere of influence of the 12 special districts included in this report. Thank you. Are there public comments on this recommendation? Are there commission comments or questions? Commissioner Zaragoza has one quick question. Go right ahead. As a newbie, first term, for clarification on uh, the Devil's Den Water District, um, I saw the map. It looks like it's a split county. And how does that work on sphere of influence? Does one county have priority over the other, or they both have to be more or less in agreement? 
Uh, we are the principal county for uh, Devil's Den Water District. It is in both Kern County and Kings County, but the majority of the assessed value of the property is in Kern County, which makes us the primary LAFCO for their purposes. Um, we've done several uh, annexations and detachments uh, in other counties. Uh, we've done detachments in, in Tulare County for Kern Tulare Water District. Uh, we did an annexation in Los Angeles County for Tohon Castaic Water District, uh, which was a rather rather large right. one, if you might remember. Uh, so this isn't any, anything new, and we do not need to consult. We, we do share the information with the other LAFCOs okay. as, we do, as we do this, but we do not have to consult with them on the process. So the city of influence, which may occur in Kings County, more or less, is, is uh, primarily determined like Kern County LAFCO approval. Correct. And then maybe they're informed, but there's no appeal on their end. It's pretty much a done deal. It is a done deal. Uh, there are LAFCOs that have made a, made a deal between them where when there's a principal LAFCO uh, that handles an annexation, they, the actual sphere of influence is handled by the opposite LAFCO the minority LAFCO. Los Angeles LAFCO has come to us and talked about possibly doing something like that in the past, uh, but this commission decided to turn them down on that request. Okay. Uh, that's been several years ago before my time, but the current one has asked me about it again uh, from time to time. Thank you much. Yep. Are there other commission questions or concerns? I'll entertain a motion to approve the recommendation of staff. Motion. Second. Uh, Commissioner Crump, motion. Commissioner Couch, second. May we have the roll call, please? Commissioner Arnold? Aye. Commissioner Couch? Yes. Commissioner Crump? Yes. Yes. Commissioner Fowler? Yes. Commissioner Yes. Commissioner Yes. Aye. Aye. Thank you. We're on to item 7A, 1804, North of the River Sanitary District Number 1, Annexation Number 113, and County Service Area Number 71, Detachment U, Reorganization. A vote is required. Consideration of the proposed or reorganization of 45.75 acres consisting of two parcels. Parcel A is southeast corner of Hegeman and Nord Road, 56.89 acres, and parcel B is the southeast corner of 7th Standard and Zerka Road, 18.86 acres. A notice of exemption has been filed by North of the River Sanitary District Number 1. This proposal has 100% landowner consent Applicants have filed have requested notice, hearing, and protest hearing be waived. If approved, this proposal is subject to condition recommended by the executive officer. Mr. Knox? Yes. As stated, this annexation is for the purpose of gaining sewer service. There are two adjacent parcels to this annexation. There was discussion about why these parcels were not brought into the city instead of remaining in the county and handled by north of the river. And without throwing anyone under the bus, I would say that these property owners have waited significantly longer than they should have, and it's better to place them in North River Sanitation District at this time. Uh, this annexation is consistent with the general plan, regional transportation plan, or specific plans. There's no ag land conversion. Uh, it's consistent with commission policies, conforms to the assessor parcels. We have an indemnification agreement. The pro proposed annexation overlaps with CSA 71. The county has agreed to detach uh, from CSA 71. CEQA is handled by a notice of exemption adopted by the applicant. Taxation, there is no direct taxation. This is a cost fee basis of which um, uh, the services are provided. The applicant has garnered 100% consent. The district has requested that notice, hearing, and protest hearing be waived. Effective and overlapping agencies and districts were notified. Information provided was included in the report and recommendation. The process required by the Cortese-Knox-Hertzberg Act has been followed, including notices to affected agencies 
a notices and publications required by law. It is recommended that the commission review and consider the environmental document adopted by the applicant. It is further recommended that the commission approve annexation number 113 to the North River Sanitary District for parcels A and B with a detachment from CSA 71, waiving notice, hearing, and protest hearing and subject to conditions recommended by the executive officer. Thank you. Is there public comment on this item? Ms. Menchaca? No. Is there commission comment or question? One on the screen. I'll entertain a motion to approve staff's recommendation. Motion, Sanders. Sanders motion. <laughs> Second, please. Second, couch. Couch second. Thank you. May we have a vote? Commissioner Rodeo? Aye. Commissioner Couch? Yes. Commissioner Fowler? Yes. Commissioner McKibbin? Yes. Commissioner Sutter? Yes. Commissioner Stripner? Aye. Commissioner Sargosa? Aye. All ayes, motion passed. Thank you. We're into commission items. Number eight on our agenda, 8A, report definition of substantially surrounded. Referral from the commission on previous work and background on the creation of a definition of substantially surrounded as it relates to island annexations under government code section 56375.3. Mr. Knox. At the last meeting of the commission, there was a request by Commissioner Zaragoza to take another look at the definition of substanti substantially surrounded as it applies to island annexations under government code section 56375.3. The term substantially surrounded has historically been used within the code section without definition. This allows for each LAFCO to determine their own definition. As Commissioner Couch pointed out, Colonel LAFCO has traditionally not defined the term but rather leave the commission it, leave it to the commission to make a determination with each individual island annexation as to what is appropriate after looking at local conditions. To my knowledge, Colonel Lafco has never heard an annexation where a determination of su substantially surrounded was made. To date, Colonel Lafco and primarily the city of Bakersfield have focused on islands that are completely surrounded. As we are getting to the end of the number of completely surrounded islands that are eligible under the island annexation code, Uh, section, there will be a more of an emphasis on areas that are potentially surrounded, so the topic is timely. Adding to the timeliness, the governor re recently signed a bill, SB 1449, creating a grant program to provide infrastructure improvements in areas that are being considered for island annexation process. The interesting part for our purposes is that the bill has a definition of substantially surrounded. And will include uh, and will be included in the Cortese Knox Hertzberg Act for the first time. The definition is limited to the grant program and does not deter local LAFCOs from creating their own definition, but does provide insight into the current legislator's intent, legislative intent. As this is new, I asked Mr. Schroeder to write a brief on the, the new language and the effect it has on our current policies and future requirements. This was included in your in your packet. What I see here are two reasonable approaches. If I were a city, I would want to reduce the amount of uncertainty to maximize the time and effort needed to bring an annexation before the commission. It is also reasonable for the commission to indicate that they want to look at each uh, annexation individually and assess the local conditions and make an informed decision. While neither side is wrong, it does not leave much room for a path forward that meets both needs. With that is my recommendation that the commission consider referring the issue of substantially surrounded to the policy committee. Let's try that again. Is there public comment on this item? Are there commission comments or questions? 
I had a question for the uh, <clears throat> executive officer. Uh, this was reviewed back in 2019, this topic. And Correct. I believe the uh, commissioner was Commissioner R Rivera? Correct. City of Bakersfield, uh, yes. co-commissioner. And what was the, what were the, the, f the final conclusions based on that? We did not make a final conclusion. Okay. Uh, there was a couple options that were uh, thrown out, I would say, uh, but none really came to the surface as being in, um, you know, a, a solution that met everyone's needs. And at that time, Commissioner Rivera said, I don't really need to move forward with this at this time. And so we dropped it. Based on the uh, information that was sent out in the packet, I guess um, there was four options, um, which I did read. And for just referral or for, how would you say? Uh, Refresh. Refreshing. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, one one option was create hard and fast guidelines that apply in all our circumstances, and the other option was create a series of options for the commission to consider when determining if a community is substantially surrounded. Third option is keep defining on a case by case basis, and then the fourth one is provide the executive officer discretion to make determination, but with a commission override or appeal process. Uh, and those four options were not uh, in any way, there was no majority of decision to go either way. There was not. Here it is 2022, and you mentioned something about obviously the, the uh, some of the communities that are now facing potential annex annexation are getting already, if they're completely surrounded, chances are they'll be annexed at some point. And now the uh, remainder county islands would be substantially surrounded. I have a question. I'm not sure if you can answer this question, but this recent Senate bill that was passed, I believe you mentioned for infrastructure financing or support. Who are the applicants and what kind of money are we looking at? And that's something that have you been approached by a city or? So the, the bill was just passed this last se, uh, this last session. It does not go into effect until January first of next year. Okay. Uh, there was not money specifically written into the bill itself. Okay. That would have been held in a budget trailer bill, and I have not seen whether um, there was a, an amount allocated towards this at all. Um, I was going to get to this later, but the. The governor has until Friday to sign bills oh, yeah. or veto bills or they or they die. Um, so th this is this is the end of their legislative session. A month ago, they they the legislator fi uh, finished up on their deadline and the governor has 30 days in which to either sign or or um, move forward. So without knowing what the budget trailer bill was or what he's going to sign i don't know the answer to to that um what whether there's any any money do you know if there was any, what was the purpose what intended uses that could be the money could be used for so one of the, one of the arguments cities have had about not taking in islands is the infrastructure is so poor that they're gonna have to pour a bunch of money into it to bring it up to standard right and this is the legislators in, in, intent uh attempt to try to resolve that problem. Uh, so if you bring the infrastructure up, there really isn't another excuse not to take take that area in. Uh, so that that's the intent, my, my understanding of their intent. Um, I'm also aware that they have a very large surplus from last year, but I also understand that the revenues coming in this year are not gonna be anywhere near. So there's a, interesting gaming going on here of when is the money available and <laughs> right I have a technical question if you can't answer that's fine but has anybody looked at how many substantially surrounded communities are disadvantaged communities obviously with poor infrastructure that potentially could benefit from this type of investment 
We're working on that. <laughs> Bud is putting together what he calls a heat map that shows what areas would be considered substantially surrounded with, say, 66%, two-thirds surrounded, 75% surrounded. And so we could take a look at those kind of issues and, and, and look in what does that really mean for these neighborhoods. Uh, so that's coming. We, we aren't, weren't able to finish it uh, before this meeting, but that's something that we're, we're looking at. And it's also helpful in our conversations with the city so they know what's, how we're looking at them and uh, be able to move forward or not, or not move forward. If the city doesn't mind, if they were identified, if, if that map, heat map was, was actually finalized and vetted to be correct, would the city be interested in, a, in applying for state funding? And are you guys geared toward having a plan of action? Uh, you might want to go to the microphone if you have something to say, because sure. I, I can hear you, but I'm not sure everybody else can. I'd just like to jump in with a question for you, Mr. Hallen. Do you have your own heat map that's already been prepared? <laughs> We do not, as uh, we've had some discussions with Bud, so why duplicate the work if they're going to do it, right? So, <laughs> <laughs> smart. Um, smart. The, uh, the city is um, always open to applying for state funds um, when it's the right match, right, for what the city is trying to do. Um, so, I... I'm aware of this legislation. We also have a legislative advocate that um, alerts us to pending legislation that's out there. I also, uh, I believe, and, and I'm not, don't quote me on this, this is based on what we've been given by our legislative advocates. The governor set, did set aside some funding in this year's budget for this potential ask, um, but I don't, I don't know if it's been, you know, like, like Blair said, it was a trailer bill, so it's all dependent on if this is approved. So, uh, but there's the potential shortfall for this next year as well. So, uh, but the the from the city standpoint, we we would always look for state funding if it's the right match. Are there other questions for Mr. Hallen? Uh, more a bud question the heat map that you're working on bud um, obviously you're busy doing other things uh, as part of your job description but when would you think you might have that first draft available for review well so there's a couple different ways of looking at a heat map especially when you're looking at something like this is uh, I could have the heat map ready when we're just looking at the amount of boundaries of let's say 60%, whatever. I could have that ready probably in a week or two. The issue that comes in is you can have an area that could be 90% surrounded, but does it fit some of the other items? Mm -hmm. Is it a disadvantaged community? Is there housing gonna go in there? What's the general plan of the city? Uh, all these different things, so these are multiple heat maps that I'm looking at uh, building and modeling out. I think you want to be comprehensive in your analysis, therefore you're looking, if you're going to be doing um, a scenario of heat maps, are you looking like another month or so? Yeah, I could do that. I, I could do that. Well, you would have to talk over with your boss because he determines your workload, but I just wanted to know the timing on that. All right. Well, I will jump in there. Uh, something else I was going to announce at the end of the meeting is we do not have an annexation that's going to be ready for October. Uh, so it's very likely that we will not have an October meeting and not we would next meet in December 7th, uh, which is our combined November-December meeting. So... I will answer for Bud and say yes, he will have that ready for the, <laughs> for, the, for the December meeting. Well, that's good to know. Further questions for either Bud or, <laughs> or Mr. Helen. So uh, your recommendation is that we bounce this to the policy committee. I, I say consider whether you want to or not. Uh, the, 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 I, I wanted him to f just answer that one more final question. Sorry, Barbara. I think 
if the circumstances have changed, you know, 2019 is only three years ago. I wasn't here, so I have no idea what was discussed. And uh, I think half the board was probably here, I would imagine. If, if, you know, there's a lot of new faces, myself and Saul. Um, don't want to go back and rehash something with no real urgency or opportunity for change, but you mentioned that perhaps things have changed a bit, and you mentioned a couple of things. One would be um, the islands themselves are probably getting down to zero, and then the next level of potential annexations would be substantially surrounded. The other change would be um, there might be funds or you know investment infrastructure development funds. So those are at least two things that I think there's some urgency. Is there anything else that you're looking at, not only from the local but statewide, that other LAFCOs are doing that might be innovative toward this topic? In your, in your packet, there's kind of a, a list of different LAFCOs around the state and how they've handled this question. And it's everything from the exact same thing we've done, look at it as, as on a case-by-case uh, -case basis. You have other ones that have requirements that are 66%, 75%, um, or some combination of, of different factors. So I have look, we have looked at those in the past. I have not done anything recently um, looking at that. Um, one other option we could consider is do a minimum. It's a, don't bring us anything unless it's over, you know, two thirds, and then over two thirds, the commission will d determine um, whether it's, it still meets the definition. So there's a minimum well, there. Right. Different ways we can do that. Yeah. So there's multiple ways you can do that. The one I hate the most is the one that gives me the authority to do it. <laughs> um, that's just asking for trouble. And and how would that help the city if there is some type of uh, guideline or? procedural statement that LAFCO has, would it give you, I'm looking at the assistant city manager, uh, any kind of a direction as far as how to plan, uh, how to utilize your manpower and resources to develop a product that would meet LAFCO's definition? So let me um, just get clarification before I answer that question. Um, you're asking if if there's a city boundary or uh, a city boundary that's that's in an area that is less than 66 percent is that is that what you're asking sorry no we're not setting any percent yeah, no. and then and i think the question is not fair to him because yeah, he doesn't know, know what you're talking about that's why I well, there's Thank a you. there's a request, or I made the request last time to consider uh, having the policy committee look at this topic and see if there is something that we can have consensus on defining what is a substantially surrounded unincorporated area. And if we did, or have some kind of guidance, it may not be detailed, but at least it'll give you a parameter to work with. Would that help the city? Because as a you know, a city staffer and researcher, you don't want to be, you want to be focused so you know what you're looking at. Um, if you had a heat map, that would definitely give you a direction. <laughs> but, you know, uh, so I'm just trying to get, how would that help the, the city of Bakersfield? I should say that's the city of Bakersfield because there's other cities in Kern County. Or is this more of a, a nice thing to have amenity, but it's not as key? For annexation, I think it would be hard for me to answer that question without the data. So I think I need to see the the map in order to give you uh, an accurate okay. answer to that. So fair, fair, it's, fair I, I was trying to develop a hypothetical to to see if I can narrow in to exactly what your question is, but um, I I think I need more data in order to be able to tell you. And that's partly why I didn't have any public comment. I'm just interested to hear the discussion of the commission at this point. So. Well, the fact that we have not had a substantially surrounded tells me that that uncertainty uh, has led to no applications coming in under substantially surrounded uh, circumstances. Um, 
if I'm a city, I don't want to spend a bunch of time and resources on something that I don't have a really good idea of whether the commission is going to approve it or not. I mean, we do have discretion to make decisions here, but if they follow the rules and go, we, we're pretty consistent with our, our approvals. And I, I weed out a lot of things before it comes to the commission so that there aren't a lot of, um, you know, issues that are combative or, or you know. Um, well, I, I, uh, I agree. So, I think uh, um, yeah, as it is right now, there is nothing. So we can continue as is or come up with some type of uh, uh, umbrella statement. Mm -hmm. It may not be fast and furious and direct, but at least give you a guideline. Um, my opinion is um, the city would benefit if there was a heat map. We would all benefit because this way we could see what we're looking at. Uh, the heat map would give us various levels of substantially surrounded, whether it's 60%, 75%, or 90%, just whatever. And then you would lay that out map-wise, and we can look at it. Um, I think we need that before we probably uh, do any serious analysis, but but I do think that maybe 2022 might be a good time to look at it, and, and let's see if it's going to be the same, where there's no action, or we might come up with something that might benefit everybody as far as coming up with some type of direction that is consistent so we're not arbitrary. Would you like to look at it through the policy committee, or would you like to bring it back to the, the full commission? That's kind of the question of what we're we're doing here. Too. I have an opinion on that after you finish your remarks. I'm not that familiar how the policy committee works, but if, if it would be a good vetting of the first draft, I'm, I'm in favor of that. But if the whole council wants to look at it one time, I'm in favor of that as well. Are there other commission comments or questions? Then I would like to move uh, that we refer this to the policy committee, uh, commission. May I have a second? Second, Zaragoza. Zaragoza second, Fowler motion. Could we have a roll call, please? Could I make a comment about this? Surely. Minor item, or not minor item, minor comment. <clears throat> Didn't we, were you the executive director when we actually took this to the policy committee? It was before Councilman or Commissioner Rivera made his request. It was a few years prior to that. Correct. It was under uh, Rebecca Morris. Okay. When you first when you first came up with the definition, first I came up recall, with the policy recall, of not having a definition. I don't recall the year, but it was I don't know eight years ago or so, something like that. I've been here six. I think what's uh, okay predates you. <laughs> um, Actually, this meeting makes six. The heat map will help, but we also need some sort of, we need some, uh, here's an example of a potential annexation. Because of how they draw, how the city determines, and they're going to determine that not based just on their needs, but what is the size of the parcels that are going to be annexed, who are the people that actually want to be annexed, and how that parcel or how that annexation, the shape of it, is going to determine in many cases, whether or not it fits whatever criteria we come up with. So this pro I'm, I'm almost going to guarantee you that this policy committee is going to, if I have anything to say about it, we're going to come up with, there's so many unknowns going forward, it's hard to create a policy that's going to fit everything. But taking a look at it, I'm all, all for. But that's, I don't know if I'm explaining that well, I'm probably not. That's extremely inarticulate. But there were so many variables and factors, we just decided, let's just look at this on a case-by-case -case basis. That was, it wasn't a, for a lack of trying. I think we met multiple times. Um, and I would suggest if, we, if we're going to, if the policy committee is going to look at this, this is not something we should go through quickly. The policy committee can beat it up a little bit, report back, here's kind of what we're thinking or where we're headed, and get a, re, get a, a sense from the rest of the board are we headed in the right direction? And take in, I don't know who's on the policy committee, just, but the board I think should have input into this, or is that something you just appoint to it? No, absolutely not, I, I agree with you. I think the policy committee would kick it around. They could come back with a recommendation or no recommendation. Uh, if they make a recommendation, then it's the commission's determination what to do with that to 
accept it or manipulate it and change it or turn it down. Oh. Who's on the committee? We were talking about that well, earlier. We were. Um, Commissioner Fowler is on. You are on. Com Commissioner Zaragoza is on. And we're not sure whether it's Commissioner Sanders or Commissioner McKibben. Um, so there, there's one from each category of, of that sits on the commission. So you have a, a city, a, a county, a special district, a public. We can't have five. That's a quorum of, of LAFCO. So uh, there's a motion on the floor. Is there another discussion item or question about that motion? Otherwise, I'll call for the roll call. This The motion is to refer it to the policy committee. Commissioner Ryan? Aye. Commissioner Yes. Commissioner Yes. Yes. Commissioner Yes. Yes. Commissioner Aye. Commissioner Yes. All eyes. Sounded like there was a parrot voting this time. <laughs> <laughs> Motion passes. Thank you. Madam Chair. Yes. I don't recall. Uh, is the policy committee, an, it's a standing committee, not an ad hoc committee, so it follows the rules of the Brown Act. Anybody, any city representative can attend? general public all, okay. all can attend okay. we, we notice it just like we do uh, our agenda thanks so you'll reach out to the members of the committee and look for a date that works yes great Thank and you. we can meet in person or zoom that's you know there's we can make this simple or hard <laughs> uh, obviously we would meet once we have a draft heat map or various heat map because we want a, a agenda that we can actually look at and, and get into some meat and, and, and stats and whatnot. And I think you were saying you would make it happen because you have a some not a free time, but less less on the agenda for the next. So Thank we're you. not meeting next month, or we are meeting next month. I am about ninety five percent sure that we're not meeting. I leave my myself a little door open in case something comes up that we really have to handle. But I should know. Typically, everything we have to we do, we have to notify twenty one days in advance. So by the end of the next week, I'll, I'll know for sure. So is it safe to assume the opportunity to meet as a policy committee would be maybe mid-October to early November? That sounds about right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Madam Chair, can I add to that? Absolutely. I don't know that we need to. The heat map is going to be, for me, is going to be one set of facts and data that will be helpful. But I think you can meet before that just to look at scenarios to get a sense of, forget about the infrastructure uh, question um, for a moment. Just look at possible applications and what they would look like. And you'll, we can, we'll get a sense then when we do that, I think that's what we did last time, of how do you get your arms around that? How would you craft a policy that addresses this if we do? Um, so I don't necessarily, I'm not, I think your heat map will be good information and maybe even more helpful, but I think we can get started and at least have an understanding of some of the issues before we even layer in your more complicated infrastructure aspect of it. I kind of agree with that. I'd like to get going on it. Okay. I, I can say that the heat map itself, I could actually make several different heat maps because of what uh, you're saying, Commissioner, it's... You are right. There are so many different variables. So when you make a heat map, you need to kind of zero in on something. So we can make a heat map to begin with that just zeroes in on the boundaries and how much of an enclosure is there. And then we could start looking at possibly some heat maps that cover uh, general plan, housing, uh, these different other areas, disadvantaged communities, because uh, one of the things that we have to look at is a disadvantaged community has multiple uh, definitions. And if you look at the county general plan, it will have some areas mentioned as a disadvantaged. If you look at the city of Bakersfield, it will have different areas. Uh -huh. So we, we have to look at all of that as, as we go through this. So that's what I'm talking about. And that, I think that's what you're saying. You are looking at many, many different variables and what could do that or how that outcome is going to come. Uh, 
but I can put so, several maps together. And so getting together and figuring out what everyone needs, that would help me as well. I'm a little nervous about all that because, because if he's going to take a, a, a situation that actually exists and bring you, the, here, here's what it looks like. What's your decision on whether that's a surrounded, substantially surrounded? And, and that comes to the commission and you've already made that decision. Mm. Well, you, he's, I, I hear you. That's a good point. So maybe it needs to be a scenario that doesn't exist. You want just theoretical. But an example of what could exist. Well, the policy committee. It probably exists in the metaverse, Tom. We could probably find it there. <laughs> and the policy committee. No, no, I, I, I hadn't thought of that. You make a good point. The policy committee won't be actually making policy. They'll be making a recommendation back to the full commission. But not on U a particular using annexation. A particular, using a particular, a particular uh, decision, uh, map of, of a, a particular situation. Hmm. If I understand, I, 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 I see what you, I see what you're saying. We'd be predetermining possibly maybe before never come to the before uh, application comes to us. Yes, but isn't that somewhat already done? If it's substantially surrounded, you could put you a map. Have, we don't say, know what that is. You don't have is. public input. You don't have any any right. decision. But we could say, based on a map, that here is a map of the substantially surrounded unincorporated communities. That's just a fact. If we say that, doesn't mean we're in any way giving them preferential treatment. No, you've decided what substantially surrounded means then. That's right. You've made, you, you, uh, you've, uh, th that particular group of people will not be able to uh, right. challenge the, that particular item because you decided I, I, I it already. I used the wrong, you, you, you're, you're right on, I used the wrong, if, it, if there's an island and we say, here is a map of all the islands that are sur surrounded, and these islands are still unincorporated, are unincorporated and not annexed, but we, because there is a factual map, and maps don't lie, supposedly, we can say here's the map that meets that criteria. And, and just from our past two or three meetings, the city of Bakersfield has brought at least two to four of those situations. Those were completely surrounded. We're completely surrounded. We, we already knew that. It's a fact. But we didn't say they were going to get preferential treatment. We just said as long as they meet the guidelines, whatever those guidelines were. So I can see your point, and maybe we can maybe massage it so it doesn't provide too much detail. But there should be some. You got to have some facts of what's existing. What's the baseline in Kern County? What what do we have? Because if by chance the heat maps show there aren't that many potential candidates, there's no need. To have a policy statement because i don't know how that would make it worthwhile but if we could say oh wait a minute we do have potentially some candidates down the road it I, might be helpful but you know that's I, how I, look I would at look at it, it from the other side of course i'm a public member so i'm looking at it from the citizen side when we make a determination on substantially surrounded say it's 75 percent and we're telling them in every case where it's 75% surrounded, the people in that neighborhood, in that community, don't have a right to protest the annexation. That, you know, that's been a problem for me for even a completely surrounded island. But that we're dealing with a, a major issue to people. And I think we can't be cavalier about it. And I think we... We want to be helpful to the city when it obeys the rules and obeys Cortese Knox, but I don't think we need to go over backwards to make things easy for the city to take away the individual neighborhood's right to determination. So um, I think when the policy committee meets, and I'm on the committee, my I would urge them to think more generally about that percentage. And the city came to us years ago, David's right, and they wanted it to be 51% surrounded. And the committee met and didn't want that. And we had lots of public comment. We had people from the city do nice presentations. Uh, and it went before the commission, and the commission decided to keep the status quo, which was to look at each individual case individually. So, but I think maybe 
we don't need to have a rumble tonight. <laughs> I, I think if we talk about it at the policy committee and we'll have four opinions, it will see if we can somehow find a consensus and then bring it back to the commission and who knows what they'll do with that. But I, I do want to be mindful of what the attorney said. We don't want to get ourselves in trouble down the road. So he, right. he brought up some valid points. Mr. Knox. Um, Mr. Rice just pointed out that he actually has data that he could do a heat map on Tulare County, which is something that we don't have jurisdiction over, <laughs> and, and use that as a scenario for which to have a discussion from. Is that? As far as the law goes, that's fine, yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, I appreciate that we have an attorney present <laughs> to keep us out of trouble. Thank you, Mr. Schroeder. All right, so we do have a motion on the floor. Madam Chair, I'm sorry yes. to interrupt one out. Sure. Is there any case law, has this been litigated at all, that somewhere along the line somebody, some court said that's not substantially surrounded? Yes. And right. in fact, the Attorney General's office wrote an opinion in 2012 that's that says take it on a case-by-case -case basis. Oh, well, <laughs> that's good to know. Thank you, Tom. <laughs> I think that's in your packet. It is in your packet. It was I in the packet. I didn't see that. Can you, can you send that to me, the opinion letter? I have it. Thank you. Yep. I wonder, of course, we still have a motion hanging there, but I wonder if the policy committee members could receive that full packet with uh, Attorney General Kamala Harris's opinion on it and the whole thing. That yes. was quite a lot to um, get through in our packet. But if we could all have that in advance of the meeting, that would be great. So I'm going to call for the question and ask for a vote on this motion to refer to the policy committee. We did it. Oh, we did it. Okay, that's right. You jumped in after. Great. <laughs> oh, okay. You're driving me crazy, folks. All right. So we're going to go on with our general business. Uh, we need approval of the monthly expense list 22-08. Um, Mr. Knox, do you have a comment on that? I do not. It's pretty standard. Yes. Can I have a motion to approve? Motion, Sanders. Thank you. Second couch. Second couch. We have a roll call on that, please. Commissioner Young. Aye. Commissioner Couch. Aye. Commissioner Crouch. Yes. Commissioner Fowler. Yes. 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 Aye. Thank you. We're on to item 9B, legal services, request for proposal. We need to have an approval of agreements with two firms to provide counsel to the commission. Mr. Knox. At the August meeting, this commission approved contracting with Braun Gosling and McMurtry, Hartsock, Worth, and St. Lawrence for legal services. As legal counsel works for the commission directly and not for staff, the contracts need to be approved by the commission. Including your packet are copies of the contracts. These are standard engagement contracts from each firm with additional language recommended by Mr. Schroeder. It's my recommendation to approve contracts as presented. Are there comments? Uh, we don't have our legal firms present. Is there public comment on this item? No. Are there commission comments or questions? I'll move approval. Approval by Couch. Second, Couch. Sanders. Thank you. Second, Commissioner Sanders. May we have a vote? Commissioner Young. Aye. Aye. Commissioner Yes. Commissioner Yes. Commissioner Yes. 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 Aye. Aye. Thank you. We're on to our executive officer, miscellaneous items, Mr. Knox. Yes. Our, our accountants have let us know that their uh, portion of the books have been closed for the 2021 2022 fiscal year. Uh, we are now in the process of working with Brown Armstrong uh, to start the, the audit process for that year. So that's moving forward. Um, I mentioned legislation already. Um, the governor has until Friday to sign bills. 
Uh, we will. Um, there's one bill that um, actually was already signed, which is AB uh, 2949, which will be enacted January 1st, which will um, revise the Brown Act requirements for holding meetings by video conference. I have yet to take a deep dive in the new requirements, um, but we have until January, so we got some time to look at that uh, as we go forward. Also, um, Cal AFCO conference is coming up in October. Um, currently, six people are going. I don't know the availability of rooms if anyone else wants to go, but if you do, let us know and uh, we'll look that up and see whether that's a possibility or not at this point. Um, I mentioned before, we're likely not going to have an October meeting. Um, I don't have an annexation. Uh, sphere of influence reviews aren't that time specific that we need to get them done immediately. So it gives us a little more time to maybe collect some more since these have been very slow coming in. Uh, but I will confirm one way or another in the next week. Uh, if not, um, our next meeting is December 7th. Uh, a day that will live in infamy. <laughs> and th that's my report. Thank you. Are there any other comments before we adjourn? We are adjourned. <laughs> <laughs>